today we're going to talk about using typography and fonts to make pretty sublimation designs. So this tutorial is not intended on um, logos or other sorts of graphic design or marketing tools, which they can translate into that. Um, but this is more specifically geared at crafters who do sublimation or even vinyl um, t-shirts in general. Um, I just thought that it was about time that I sat down and um, tried to explain my thought process on how I, I make decisions on, on what to do with my text. Um, it seems to be a problem that a lot of people face often. Um, and it, it's just one of those things that can be kind of hard to explain. So um, I have been prepping for this all week, trying to make graphics to help um, talk through um, the concepts behind it. And this, this isn't a, there's right and wrong ways. Um, the things that I will say today might not be the things that somebody else says tomorrow. Um, it's all kind of personal preference and opinions, um, but it seems to work for me. Um, I, I feel like I do a pretty decent job of picking out fonts and, and laying text out in certain ways. Um, if for those of you who are just joining us for a video for the first time, um, my name's Debbie with Debbie Does Design. I started out as um, kind of a hobby crafter. Uh, my day job um, over the years has been um, graphic design, web design. Um, I worked in merchandising in apparel for a while. And so um, the, the design stuff was already kind of something that I did. I did not go to college for that. Um, I started reading books back before YouTube was even a thing um, about 18 years ago, diving into Photoshop. So I've been using Adobe programs for 18 years now, um, and it's just all stuff I've just picked up along the way, doing whatever task I need to do. Um, so this is not a tutorial for graphic designers. This is a tutorial for people who are not graphic designers, uh, primarily geared towards crafters. And if you are doing anything with a Cameo or a Cricut or sublimation or screen prints, at some point you're going to have to sit down and make pretty text. So that's, that's what we're gonna go over today and I'm going to try really hard to not take too long doing it. But um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, so the, the thought process behind fonts is just because it's pretty doesn't mean that that's the right font to use for your project. So I pulled up a couple of, of examples. I couldn't actually pull up the designs. I had to pull up my product images because I've got Dropbox doing something stupid in the background and it wouldn't let me get them. So um, the fonts that you choose to go with, whether they're going to stand alone or go with um, some clip art or artwork that you purchase, it should, it should match the feel of what you're going for. So for this one, for example, the font in the, in the middle, this, the main word freaking, I wanted that to kind of, as you read it in your head, you almost kind of yell freaking with it. Okay. So when you're reading words, you're seeing them. I mean, you're, you don't usually see somebody's shirt and you say it out loud. You, you kind of read it in your head and it makes you laugh or whatever the emotion that you're trying to portray there. And uh, the fonts that you choose can help emphasize those, those, those goals. Your, your kind of your end goal with what you're doing. And if you're designing a t-shirt, you want when somebody to see the t-shirt, you want them to have an emotional reaction to it. So the fonts that you choose can help invoke those emotions that you're going for. Um, so I've got a couple here. This is another good example um, where you think of this, this phrase, she is beauty, she is grace, she will peck you in the face. <laughs> you know, like 
like the, there's an audible difference when you're reading it in your head and trying to get the text to kind of go with that. At least for me, my thought process process behind words is is you kind of want it to flow with with how you're kind of reading it in your head and and help emphasize that stuff. So the peck you is big. I have these little little burst signs next to it. Um, here's another one, just kind of a, a fun font used. This is big. And then the little um, kind of afterthought is, is it's kind of a fast looking font, you know, like you're kind of yelling it a little bit. Um, this was, uh, this is just an example of something I was trying to do that was a little bit less girly. Um, which is ridiculously hard when you're doing a cow. <laughs> so um, I realized that th most men are not going to want to wear a shirt like this, but there are a lot of women out there that will buy shirts like this for their husband or their kids or whatever. So e even though... Um, I realize that this isn't super manly. I just kind of wanted to show the use of the color and the fonts. Um, you know, that this this the bigger black font is a little bit more masculine. I didn't use as many colors for the whole overall design. Um, you know, in contrast to some of these where we have a lot more bright color going on. Um, I was trying to make it a little bit more well, less girly. So this is an example of another thing where the fonts can kind of match the vibe you're going for. So the very first thing to hit on, and I already kind of started talking about that, is you need to know who your audience is. And when I say audience, I don't mean the person who's going to be wearing the shirt, which that matters, but the very first person who you need to convince that this is a great t-shirt or a great mug or whatever is the person who's who's actually buying it so the person who's buying it is going to be having the person they're buying it for in the back of their mind but ultimately if the person who's shopping for it doesn't like it you're going to lose them right off the bat and it's never going to make it there so and yes there are people who are shopping for themselves and you know that's important too and and that that should also be um factored in when you're thinking about who you're gearing it towards but um my examples that I kind of drew up here in this this first one, not drew up, but made up. This first one, the person, the example that came to mind were my parents. So I'm sorry, mom and dad, you're probably never going to watch this. But if you are, I'm kind of teasing dad just a little bit. Um, so on the left here is an example of a just very, very plain design, not very thought through. Um, but my point behind it is not that, okay, this is ugly, but it's that, um, so this is a fishing shirt is the idea behind it. The person wearing it would be my dad. Now my dad would never go buy himself a graphic tee about fishing, but my mom would absolutely go buy a t-shirt that says, I'd rather be fishing or some other clever fishing phrase on it. Um, my dad would not care at all between the two. He'd be, oh, this is cute. You know, he'll wear it when he's working in the yard on the weekend. That would be the end of it. My mom, the one shopping, is going to be the one that looks at the, the shirts or the designs, whether she's on Etsy or she's in Walmart or she's at a boutique or whatever. My mom's gonna be the one out there shopping. And the one on the left looks cheap. And it's not even so much that like the design is bad, uh, it's, it's it's the fonts used in, in the design are very bland. They're, they're fonts that you see everywhere. And so there's not a whole lot of personality or um, thought put into it. So it looks kind of um, cheap, <laughs> you know, like, it's all about building your brand and building your products to be unique and stand out among everyone else, especially if you're selling on Etsy. The, the number of t-shirt sellers on Etsy is mind blowing. So somebody searches, I'd rather be fishing, and they're gonna scroll and scroll and scroll and see a million options. So the fonts that you choose can make or break your products. 
so that's why I'm, I, I'm doing all of this. So this one on the right, all I did was pick different fonts. I did the same exact color. I did, did the same layout. I just picked fonts that have a little bit more personality to them that are, that are complementing to each other to just look a little bit less cheap. <laughs> this one on, on the second line down, same concept. This would be something that a little girl would wear. I used a six-year-old girl as, as the example. Um, if you were out shopping, this little girl's out shopping with her mom, and she sees the shirt on the left, she's going to be all sorts of excited about it. There's pink on it and it says Little Miss Bossy, you know, it sounds sassy, whatever. A six-year-old girl is not going to put any thought whatsoever into the fonts except for, you know, oh, that's cute. It's got like some little swirly things, whatever. Um, the mom, the one who's paying for it, <laughs> I, I mean, I can't say that everybody would recognize these fonts. Um, I feel like the top one is probably pretty um, recognizable. Uh, what it curls? Yeah, curls MT. So this, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on this at the end here. Um, but there's there's certain fonts that you just need to avoid at all costs, and this is one of them. Um, and mom might recognize that because it's a font that has been used forever and it has been used in all the wrong ways so many times <laughs> you know like it's a title for a flyer from your church group or it's it's just it's been used and abused and it's one of those that that the coolness factor has worn off a long time ago so mom's not going to get excited about shirts that she's seeing with these fonts where she's like, oh man, I used that back in high school when I was doing that school report or whatever, you know? Like if they can recognize it, it's some it's a font that she has used before that like, oh, this is a exclusive special font that I've never seen before. That whole like excitement and buzz that a font could possibly create for someone is gone. So all I did was pick a couple of cute, still girly fonts, but they're fun and it changed the whole look so super super easy fixes it's just all about making smart decisions with the fonts so like i was saying um when i was showing you the the designs with the cows and stuff fonts can can invoke emotions so starting out with trying to decide what your design, the words that you're using, the, the artwork that you're putting the fonts with, uh, the message that you're trying to portray can help give you a little bit of direction on where to start looking for fonts. Um, not where to start looking, but what, what style you wanna start looking for. So this was just me creating a little bit of an example to show you how different fonts have a different feel you know, they, they portray something different. Um, you know, script fonts, especially when they're, they're wide and low, they, they kind of imply softer or slower speaking. Um, the bigger fonts with the little embellishments around the sides are more fun and kind of help put a little bit of emotion behind what you're saying. Um, these kind of dry brush, um, very sharp strokes can, can look like angry or, or loud too. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that'll kind of flip back and forth, um, and, and kind of, kind of blur into more than one category for sure. You know, elegant and formal is just kind of a, another word for essentially the same thing, but, um, you know, playful can also be sweet and it can also be groovy and girly, you know, so the, there's a lot of overlap, but this was just me kind of showing you an example of how um, fonts can have emotion behind them. Um, and, and sometimes you can kind of assign that emotion depending on how you use them or what words you're going with them. But it's a good place to start. You know, you open up your computer and you're like, oh, I want a font for this and this is for a little kid or it's a funny saying, I'm gonna go find something more playful, you know. 
So that could just help give you a little bit of direction on where to start. Um, there's different font types and I'm not going to go over this a lot. Um, the, there's going to be a blog post that corresponds with this video. So all of these are um, going to be on the website. You could just right click and download, save to your phone, print, whatever, any of these pages. That was kind of the idea was um, if this was in person and I was doing a class to explain font picking, these would be the handouts for the class. <laughs> and I didn't want to be sitting there trying to design a design with you guys, you know, watching with the video going because choosing fonts is a very long process. Um, if you're putting thought into it and and that would have been a really long video so but there are different classes of fonts different categories of fonts and this just kind of explains the different kinds um the reason why this is useful to know is some graphic software design software will actually categorize fonts for you and so it can help filter through your list so I'm, I'm an illustrator here. Uh, I'm not going to be covering a lot of like specific illustrator things today. This is more kind of a, a broad um, overview of, of fonts in general. So whatever software you use, this isn't anything specific to illustrator. But um, when in illustrator, when you go over to choose your fonts, there's a there's filter functions. So we have the sans serif, the serif, the slab, the script, the black letter, monospaced, handwritten, and decorative. So knowing what these are will just help you know what you're filtering. <laughs> um, and, I, and I believe it's the same thing on Photoshop. I usually do all of my text in Illustrator, uh, but I think they have the same filters there. And it would help you when you're shopping for fonts. You, you kind of, if you're looking for something specific, you know, these are the categories that they tend to fall into. Sometimes decorative is called display. Um, sometimes you'll see a couple variations out there like dingbats, but we are not touching dingbat fonts today. Um, so those are the types. This is explaining what tracking, kerning, and leading are, which are all variations of font spacing. So when, and again, I'm referring to Illustrator because that's where we're at, but any program you're in, we'll cover this. But so the tracking is when, when you, so here's tracking, you could choose the spacing between the letters. So it's not, it's, it's being, it's being divided evenly across the whole block of text. If you want it to be a little bit more strategic on how they're tucking together, that's when you start looking at the kerning. So there's different settings for the kerning. Um, I think I, let me see, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull this one out so I can kind of show you as we click it. I won't white bind it so you can see. So, over here we have auto which is what it's always on unless i decide to go in and mess with it optical will change it just a little bit now hold on let me put this to zero so it's a little bit easier to see so auto here's optical there are different settings here's metrics so they're all it's just doing a little bit different um assessment of what to do. Now you can go in there and do those manually if it's not doing what you want. Um, oftentimes, if you just adjust the tracking, it'll, it'll get it to a place where you want it without having to worry too much about the kerning. But sometimes they pull in a little bit weird and adjusting the kerning is a quick way to fix it. Um, if, you, if, it if that's not doing how you want it, you could, in Illustrator, you would create outlines, which of course my computer is going to think through this because we're recording a video. Um, but you can create outlines so they get converted to paths and you could just manually move them around. Um, I hope that that's not going to be a thing. There, 
So I'm not going to do that because apparently my computer doesn't want to think that through. But um, in Illustrator, there's also... See, why is it doing that? Okay. There's the touch type tool, which is awesome. So that will let you click on a letter and you can actually just move them around. And it doesn't mess with your type box. So you can go back in, you could change the font still, you could see what font you used, but it'll let you, you can resize it, you can move it up and down, you can even rotate the letter and it's still live. So I can go back to my type tool again and I can change that to a different letter. So the touch type tool is awesome. Highly recommend getting a feel for that if you are using Illustrator at all. Um, sorry, I said I wasn't gonna do any software specific things, but I needed to show that. Okay, so moving on. Leading, that's the spacing between the lines of text. So a lot of times I don't do lines because I'm, I'm, I'm doing just a few words, you know? So I, I do everything on a single line so I can move it exactly where I want it. But if you are doing blocks of text, like I was actually doing blocks of text for these graphics, then I did use the line spacing in there and you just adjust how far apart you want them. Okay, moving on. Using multiple fonts adds a lot of value to your designs. So I don't know why, but this has just always been a thing that I, I push hard. You know, um, we've got several other designers that work with us now and I, I've sat down and trained them on things. And, and this is the first thing I say, if you can make it work with your, with your design or the artwork that you're working with, if you can make it work, use at least two fonts, like two fonts, two fonts, two fonts. You can use more sometimes depending on the design. Like if it's, if it's like a, one of those where it's really text heavy and it's a long list and like each list has kind of a little bit of a different thing it's saying, then you can kind of bounce around. But if it starts to get too busy, then people are gonna get distracted and they're not gonna read the message anyway. And a lot of times the things that those words say are important to get, uh, the message across from the shirt, you know, if if they don't stop to read it, they're not going to laugh or they're not going to feel emotional about the meaningful phrase that you're using, you know, so they you don't want to lose their attention. And while, yes, they will read Let the Adventure Begin, you know, or Chin Up Buttercup, like, they're perfectly readable. The fonts are not obnoxious. They're cute. They fit the feel. If you add another font with them, it just adds a whole nother layer of interest and of value. It, it ups the price that you could sell the shirt. It ups it ups the, the quality, just everything. It's just another one of those things where it really helps build your brand. So taking that extra time to, to use more than one font makes a big difference. Now down here, I just wanted to show you how you could still kind of get that feel of, of a different font or you know breaking up the monotony of all one font by formatting it a little bit different. So this, man, this video is just making my computer be weird. So this very first one is, is just the font as is. I just got one line above the, the top and I didn't adjust anything. The very, the this one right here, the top line, I, expanded the tracking so that there's more space between the letters on the top line so it when i made it the same width it made it smaller so it kind of gives you a different weight from the top to the bottom switching one line to outlines instead of being filled is another way to break up the monotony and kind of give it a little bit of a difference between the top and the bottom these two down here are same examples from above, but this is a font where the capital letters look different than the lowercase letters. So depending on the font, if you go through and just turn on the, you know, turn it to all caps on some of them, you'll see, oh look, it changes. And sometimes it changes a lot. So it's worth looking. Um, sometimes I will write out a word that has like, the first three letters are capitalized and the second three letters are all lowercase instead of just hitting that all caps thing. So when I'm looking through the fonts, 
I could see what the uppercase and the lowercase look at at the same time while I'm browsing, which could just, it sometimes it completely changes the font. So the uppercase and lowercase, you have to actually type it out on the keyboard for the previewer to, to see it. Because if you just hit that little all caps thing, um, it's just going to show you all lower cases in the little previews because it's not it's not like reading that yet. Okay, so moving on, I sat down and put together some examples of font duos. Everybody's heard of a font duo, right? So um, this can be a very long process. <laughs> um, especially if you have a lot of fonts. So um, I design full time. This, this is my gig. This is what I do is I make designs that people put on t-shirts and mugs and doormats and throw pillows. And um, so I have 5,000 fonts on my computer <laughs> and it, it's a process. And um, this week after realizing like how much time I, fent, I spend on fonts, I'm going to look into some font managing software. So if anybody knows any like good recommendations on that one, I'd love to hear it. But um, choosing fonts that go well together um, is can be really hard. Um, but the whole concept behind it is you want it to contrast so that they're not blending in. You don't want to use fonts that are so close to each other, then, you know, what's the point? Um, but you also don't want them to kind of clash with each other. So on the bottom here is my example of fonts that are clashing. Um, you know, we've got a Gothic font with a casual bubbly font. We have a thick font with a skinny, formal, straight, sharp edges font. Um, you you want to stick with the same emotion, like we talked about earlier, that you're trying to um, say with your words, your fonts, uh, with your design aimed at your audience. So this is all tying back in. <laughs> um, so keeping all of those things in mind, Who's the design for? Who's going to be shopping for it? What are the words that it, they are saying? Now, I purposely didn't mess with any of the colors on these. The only example where I changed the colors was back when we did the six-year-old girl one because I just wanted to prove that there's pink and a little girl doesn't care. There's just pink. Um, so I am not getting into color, which is, a, which is another tool that you can use. And we'll talk about on the next um, section here. But... This is just, just fonts. So these are examples of, of ones that I feel like look cute together. Um, and I didn't want to just give you examples of kids ones because finding cute, handwritten, bouncy kids fonts that look cute together is way easier than a lot of other um, font pairings and and you can find them online a lot like a lot of those kids those bouncy little kids font like the very first one this um, lakeside and chunky bear that uh, a lot of times they even sell them in the same font so how I was talking about how the capitalized and the not capitalized letters they look different so they'll sell sell like a duo right in itself or they'll have two different fonts it'll be whatever script then whatever whatever you know like in in a font duo so the kids ones are a lot easier i did include a couple there that they're cute and might be a good place to start um but i was trying to show some other examples that aren't as kidsy um you know this one is a little bit more plain but they still kind of fit they almost have like a like a, a a retro vibe, not like super hippie 70s, but more like 50s, you know. Um, some of these would work well for men because men and fonts, it's very hard. <laughs> um, you know, this is this is a very similar font to the one I said was angry, um, which isn't intended to be angry here. Uh, the words are irrelevant. I was just picking words to use. Um, but it's a little more fast, um, a little bit less happy, bubbly, girly. Uh, some of these distressed fonts are cool. 
Um, I really like mis mixing thick block fonts with script fonts, but when you're doing designs for men, you, sometimes those scripts are a little bit too girly. So I, I try to lean towards more of the handwritten look. So not like pretty cursive, like this is more of a pretty cursive, although that one's kind of chunky enough that it, it kind of works too. This is a girly cursive. This is a girly cursive. This one is a girly cursive. So those ones I wouldn't use for a, man, a man's design. But this one probably could get away with that top one and this one here. Um, and this one could work, um, just kind of depending on the message on, on the design. I think if it was a really manly phrase, then it might be weird. Um, now, this one could possibly work, but I wouldn't use this bottom font for a men's design. It's got the little dainty lines. It's just a little bit feminine for me. So, um, but just examples of, of finding things that work well together. Um, keeping in mind that, so I really like to overlap a lot. I feel like having blank space between the letters um, or the words can be awkward. Um, if you do that, you need to put an offset or a white out outline there so that you can still see it or change the color. If, if the two colors of the top line and the second line are different enough, then when you overlap it, it's okay as long as it's still readable, it's not blending in. Uh, but if you're doing a single color like screen prints um, where you, you have to keep it all, all black, uh, make sure you put some sort of um, offset in there, which we can, I'm going to cover some more illustrator, like actual tools in another tutorial soon. Um, so anyway, examples of ones not used right there. Um, here is some examples of some color. Um, I've been getting more and more and more into using color in the words lately. Um, they just can really help, um, make it get, give it some life and they can really help with the mood. So the pastels are a really big thing right now. Um, and I would have never used pastel colors in the past, but I've been doing them a lot. People have been into the pastels. Um, and bright colors, you know, use some color. Here's an example of what I was saying about the, out, the outline. So if the color is contrasting enough and it overlaps, then you're okay. Um, it's just when you get the black, you have to do that. Um, Next thing that you could do to help uh, add value to your text is using glyphs. And again, I'm not going to cover that because it's going to be a little bit different for every program that you're using. Um, so Google, if you don't, if you don't know how to get to the glyphs on, on the program you're using, um, but using glyphs, um, the stylistic alternative letters that are included in a lot of fonts, not all of them, in a lot of fonts though, those can help give it a more custom hand-drawn look. It fits the design. It could kind of change things around a little bit. Um, and keeping things balanced. Uh, if you ask, I call them my girls, um, the, the girls that help, they work with me and they're just my best friends and I run everything by them, but um, they, they help with some of the design work. Um, if you ask any of them, I am so OCD about this stuff. Now I'll do this, I'll do this staggered method um, quite a bit. I use that in my title screen. Um, that works, but you, you have to do it strategically to make sure that if you're going to be, you know, kind of off to the left at the beginning and like down at the right on the bottom, or you've got a piece of clip art. So um, these may have, I didn't even look at that, but so like this is off offset a little bit, but this is tucked into the words there. And then this one's kind of tucked in there and the whole horse is kind of got an off balance thing. So what I was attempting to do with this one was to give it some weight at the bottom that evened it out. Cause this whole horse is just a little, like the whole thing about him is lopsided. Sometimes the artwork that you're trying to put text with makes it really hard. And, and actually, that's why I pulled up. These are my husband's drawings. Um, I pulled these up because the, his, his drawings of animals are, are top sellers. They always have been. Um, and they're great, but they are not hard to put words next to. 
I mean, this one's a little bit more centered, so it's not as bad, but the cow is kind of hard too, um, because you know, the, the, the tail and everything's kind of off over here and there's a lot of weight with the, the tongue. And so I, I try to either place the text around it to help balance the artwork, like use the text, have it work for you <laughs> or do it right center ignore the lopsided of the artwork and hope that your text will help bring it the weight to give it a, a visually appealing balance um if if you have you know just like some text off to the side and then big text in the middle but like that's it it starts to look a little bit unfinished so for this type of work t-shirts and mugs and pillows and stuff the balance is a big deal if you're doing um you know like more traditional graphic design where um i should have silented that um you know you're doing flyers or like these infographics that i've been working on you know like you can move things around and it doesn't have to be quite as like balanced from left to right because there's not like a really big main focus that people are looking at. It's not standing alone on a blank canvas for people to see when you're doing shirts and mugs and pillows, you know, like the design has to have a, a focal point. And so keeping it balanced is a big deal. And every design software should have alignment tools for you. Like for illustrator, we center it on the artboard, center it with other text. Um, so just use those. Uh, the only thing that I will say that can get a little bit tricky sometimes with those alignment tools is sometimes the fonts have an awkward amount of dead space around them. So when you go to center them, it won't center it right because there's like this big blank space to the right of it. This is all grouped and my computer is just wanting to cooperate with recording so um, I know that's going to be slow if I start messing with it but if you're having a hard time getting something centered using the tools in your software if you convert it to paths instead of the actual font it's going to suck in all those little grabbers and it'll it'll actually use the the words instead of all that dead space that are around the words so um, I usually would copy it and move a version off the artboard. So if I need to get back to that text or I want to do another variation or I not want another word with it, I still have the editable form, um, but converting it to outlines um, or paths will, will help sometimes with that balancing if you need it. Okay, so I'm just going down these just key points that I, I want to touch on. If you are selling stuff this is this is my rule number one font rules <laughs> if you are selling things you need to buy the font um, the only loophole around that is if you are downloading a free font from a website like font bundles the free fonts on their websites come with a commercial license so you could you could do it there but the key point here is you need a commercial license if you're selling it um, a lot of these fonts will say like free for personal use, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's fine if it's a shirt you're making for you or it's a shirt you're making for your daughter or whatever. But the second you decide that you're going to sell this to someone, you need to have the commercial license. Um, if you if you happen to make a design and it goes viral on Facebook or starts selling like crazy, you would be devastated if, if a five or even $20 font came back to bite you in the ass. And so it's just not worth it. And the reason why you pay for these is because these are artists that make these fonts. <laughs> um, like This has been on my list of things to do for a long time. I would love to design a font, but it is not, not an easy process. I spend hours picking out fonts. I can't even imagine the amount of time that these these designers spend on actually creating fonts and, and making everything fit together the way that they're supposed to. So that's how these people make a living <laughs> and and it's legal. So you, you, you just don't want to put yourself in jeopardy there. If, if you want to download a free font from a website like Defont, 
um, and try it out, see if it works for your project, see if you like it, whatever, you know, that's fine. The, the free fonts will typically not have glyphs included, all the extra pretty letters, um, and you can't sell with them. If you do that, just make sure that when you do decide to sell, when you like the font, then go back and actually buy the paid version so you have the commercial license. Um, when I first started crafting, I was on every email list of every website out there that sent out free fonts every week and I downloaded fonts. I wasn't even selling, I was just you know, downloading fonts and making signs for myself and stuff like that. And um, once I started to sell um, graphics, I went through my computer and I deleted all of them. Because personally, I know that I will never keep track of what font I, I paid for and what font came from one of those free for personal use sites. So I did a hard, a hard uh, cleanse and just erased every font on my computer that wasn't like a system font that you know I knew was already there um, and, and started over and made sure that the only fonts on my computer are fonts that I have purchased the commercial license for so I never have to worry about it. So just a thought. Next rule, do not mix script fonts with script fonts. Um, sometimes, like on a rare occasion, depending on the font, um, you can kind of make it work without being a hot mess, but most often than not, it is not very visually appealing and it's a safer rule of thumb to just not do it. <laughs> Again, this is all opinion. Um, you could tell me to kick rocks. <laughs> They're just my thoughts. And um, I, I make a lot of designs and they seem to sell pretty well. So I feel like I have a little tiny bit of credibility there. <laughs> um, so don't mix, don't mix script fonts. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, next one, use proper grammar and punctuation. Um, I feel like that one kind of speaks for itself. Um, but I will admit that I caught a typo in here. So like it happens, um, you know, have somebody else read it over for you, uh, read it over yourself. I feel like sometimes when I see like, oh, that's a really bad typo. Like people get in a hurry and they just don't, they don't read it, um, don't look careful enough. Or sometimes when you're looking through fonts, you'll see the same word you know, as you're looking through these previews, you'll see the same word so many times that the word starts to just look wrong. And so you may have started with it, with it spelled wrong and just didn't catch it off the bat. And then after you've been looking at thousands of fonts for however long, the word just starts to look like it's not the word anymore. Um, and I used to think that was just something weird that my brain did where it started to get like, you know, hit a circuit overload, but it's not, I hear it all the time. It's, there's just something about seeing, even if it's a super familiar word, like you could do it with your name. <laughs> and the more fonts you look at of that same word, it just, it's, it just starts to look weird. So it's understandable that it doesn't get caught. So if you if you have a husband that you can have, take a peek at it before it goes live or, um, I recently learned that Illustrator has spell check. Never even occurred to me that that was a thing. So you could you can run a spell check on it. Um, I actually, I have a, a Echo Dot Alexa in front of me. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sitting underneath my monitor. And I ask her how to spell words all the time. Just while I'm working, if I'm feeling like not 100% confident that I'm choosing the right spelling <laughs> um, or just go copy and paste it into Google. That's a, usually a good, good trick there too. But grammar and punctuation. I will say that the only times that I would say you get like a free pass for that is sometimes we're doing designs that aren't, aren't like complete sentences, you know, like, well, a lot of them aren't. So the periods and the commas, you have a little bit of wiggle room with. Um, but sometimes they're vital in order to get the message, um, the tone of the message correctly. So having a comma and a pause, um, if it's not like being broken up in like a physical pause on the page um, for their, 
their brain to pause, then you, you might need to make sure there's a comma there. But things like an apostrophe, you know, for possession and, and stuff like that, don't leave those out. It, it just, it looks like you missed something. It looks unprofessional. So um, the really important ones, make sure they're in there. And make sure that they could read it. So my loophole on that one is sometimes people will do a design where the text is more um, abstract. Um, you know, those are the exceptions where like it, the words aren't even that important. They'll kind of be, you know, a, just a design concept, adding to the overall feel of, of a piece of artwork. Um, so if you're doing something like that, then having it unreadable is not a problem. But if there's an actual message that you're expecting people to read, make sure that they can read it. Um, which can be add the little white outline so that they're not overlapping each other, um, contrasting colors. Uh, this sometimes down here was my example of how you could fix the top one. So the, the base font, the big word in the back is the same font. I just chose a, you know, a lower, uh, more separated font that it has more defined lines, a contrasting color from behind it and added a white outline. So that people could still read, but that top one, the colors are mixing into each other. It's a brush font. So the black is shining through in places, you know, so strategically putting them together in a way that makes it readable or not. Um, and then my example on the right are just some fonts are not meant to be read well and some are just poorly designed. So there's some fonts out there that they just, they're just hard to read. I've got a few like handwriting fonts that I just need to go on and install for my computer because they are so, well, this was an example, but I didn't dig as far to find some of the really hard ones, but some of them are super messy handwriting fonts. You know, like I bought a font bundle or something and, and I, I installed all of them at once without looking at them. And then I go and look in and it's like, oh, geez, this one's a hot mess. <laughs> and like these top two, um, those are stylistic fonts, you know, like they're not meant to be read super well. Um, they're more to kind of look cool and, and people will look at it longer like, oh, well, that's that's kind of, you know, it's got a little bit more of a kind of an art feel behind it. This tall skinny one is just hard. I, I don't I don't like that one at all. So but make sure that they can read what you're doing. Um, <laughs> OK, next rule. And this is a big one for Cricut user users. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to like call you guys out. Um, it's not even your fault. Um, Cricut Design Space does something weird with script fonts and it doesn't push them together. Um, I feel like they just released an update, an update, so it might be getting better, but this is something that in the craft bubble, I see all the time and it just makes my heart hurt. Your script fonts should be touching. And if your software like Design Space is not pushing them together for you, then go and adjust the kerning or the tracking, the spacing, and squeeze them in so that they're overlapping and connecting where they're supposed to connect. So just because you've got them connecting, don't go too far and then you start to have these little ends sticking out. So adjust them, push them together. They need to be connected. <laughs> Unless it's a font where it doesn't need to be connected. But if it has little, the little wings to connect to the next letter, give them some contact. Um, never squish or stretch. So this, this is a big thing too. Actually, the, these last few ones are. Um, if you're trying to make your font fit in a certain place, which I totally get, I do it all the time, don't stretch and squish your font to make it work. Um, there are very few exceptions where that's okay. If you have like a super blocky serif font, um, or sans serif, it was what I would probably use that for. Um, you, you can get away with a little bit of squishing or stretching to kind of make it work because there's not really anything to warp in those. They're straight lines, you know, for the most part. Um, but when you're using, you know, one of these like handwritten, cute, fun fonts, script fonts, um, the proportions matter. And that will be like an immediate, oh, <laughs> that, that you could just wreck something real fast. 
So don't squish and stretch them. If you need it to fit somewhere, you can adjust the tracking and the spacing or go find another font. There's, there's, there's so many fonts out there, um, which I know it's a slippery slope. Um, you probably have one on your computer. Just, just look a little harder, but look at the proportions. If you need something that's a little bit shorter for the space that you're working with, when you're looking at the preview, look for shorter fonts. You know, like you, you just, you have to look for the font that's gonna solve the problem for you. Don't try to adjust the font to make it fit what you need because it just ends up looking bad. Um, script fonts should not be used in all caps. Again, there's an exception to that rule for a few fonts where they actually did make the first letter, the capital letter, um, not curly like a script. So sometimes there are some fonts where yeah, you might be able to get away with it. But for the most part, general rule of thumb, do not use a script font in all caps. It's just, it's busy. They, they hit weird. Um, they're not very legible. Um, so that's just one of those. It's just, it's just safer to just not do it. If you, if you want something to be in all capital letters, you, you know, you're, you're trying to, uh, put some emotion behind it, then find a handwritten font where they're not overlapping and connecting and swirly like a script, kind of like this this tall right here, or even this yes, you know? Those are cute examples of words that can be in all caps and they do just fine. Um, but these little curly script fonts, just avoid it if you can. And this one I have to zoom up on. Let's see if my computer is going to let me do it while I record. And I'm sorry, I am trying to go fast because I knew that this was going to take me a little while to explain and we're at almost in an hour. Um, but here is the, well, there's one, one last thing that I'm going to cover and then we'll be done. But this is my last rule, okay? Um, look at what you're making. Look at your design with like, just at least once before you finalize what you're doing, look at it with kind of a fresh set of eyes and make sure that the final design looks like what you meant for it to look like. So there's some, some fonts that when made into different words can give the impression that you did not intend. So this one right here, it says fresh lemon tarts. This T, I did not make this up. I, I, I did not like draw this to manipulate it in any way. And this is a cute font, but this was one of the glyphs I saw and I pulled it in for this example because that's a T, but it very much looks like an F, right? I mean, that looks like an F. So this cute little, you know, is a quick, just example design I threw together, looks like it says fresh lemon farts. And that's not the message that you're trying to put across. This next one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this clean, but these are examples that, that you see all the time. Oh. Real hot girl shit. What the heck? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say that my kids just, just jumped into that. Sent something to my phone. Um, sorry. <laughs> of course it was that long. <laughs> see if uh, YouTube pulls this down. Anyway, uh, this is a phrase that is seen all the time in posts and crafting groups with people laughing because um, there's a lot of fonts like this where the A is kind of left a little bit open and, you know, you wouldn't even like two thoughts about it when you're putting it together, you know, oh, world's best aunt, how cute. Um, but then when a fresh set of eyes looks at it and they don't already know what you are writing there, they see what their brain tells them to see and that looks like a C. So that that's one of those, like, you, you gotta watch that. Um, this is the other two, I mean, you you could see them, right? The, the click, the C and the L are really close together and so that doesn't really look like click. Um, this one, which these are awkward font choices to put together, but I just needed to show you this bottom font, um, which is, you know, kind of a techie, modern looking font. And the, 
the other letters aren't necessarily that close, but the L and the I is so close they're almost touching and turning into a U. So watch that because it happens and then it just becomes a meme that gets shared across the internet for a few days. <laughs> okay, now this I'm gonna let you guys look at later. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on it because we already kind of talked about this with the fonts. Um, and how some fonts are used and abused and should just be retired. Uh, this is the list that I came up with this week. Um, it probably took me two days trying to sort through the, the lists of, of fonts that if you're just starting out and so you haven't, you haven't been in the craft bubble for a while um, and, and you, don't, you don't know, you know, like that this font is so overused and obnoxious that it just it's bad um you know you won't know that so this is this is for all the people who may not have been around long enough to realize that some of these fonts are just kind of a do not pass go font um the majority of these are system fonts which means that they were installed on your computer when you bought it so you the these aren't they're um, not all of them, but like Comic Sans, Papyrus, Curls, Harrington, Brush Script, Alec Brown, a lot of these very first ones, um, those, those have been like, do not touch fonts for a long time. They've been around for years and years and years. Um, and so a lot of those shouldn't be new, but I still see them pop up and um, they're like hard turnoffs for people, like hard, I... I, I would probably get torn apart if I released a design that had papyrus in it. <laughs> um, but some of these are not that old and some of these are paid fonts. Um, there are a couple that are great fonts, but they have been so overused that the new has worn off and so the, the appeal is just gone. So you just wouldn't know. And if you want to use these, I mean, I am not telling you that you cannot use these fonts. I am saying that as a, a business owner, as, as an Etsy shop owner, as somebody who's trying to do a side hustle and sell shirts, um, the font that you choose will affect that. And these are ones that will immediately take value away from your products. So, um, the only one that I would put as a little bit of an exception there is um, is Samantha. Uh, it has been used and used and used and used and used, and it's been used in words that aren't that don't fit the font, and it's and people have put so many glyphs around it that you can't even read what they're saying. So that's that's just a very used and abused font. Um, but the font is beautiful. It's very well done. And there is a massive amount of glyphs for it. So depending on the project, you might be able to get away with using Samantha for the right reasons. But just it being part of a sentence and you're like just trying to, you know, you have a cute little phrase on your shirt, Samantha's not the one. Um, that would be more like a custom thing where you're putting a family name on a pillow and there's a photo behind or, you know, like there are situations where you can make that, that one kind of work. Um, and for personal use, go to town. I don't care. You can use all the papyrus and comic sayings that you want, but if you're going to do products, a lot of these are just going to immediately turn people off. Um, Magnolia Sky is another one that I kind of get crap for, um, but for the most part, everybody agrees with me. It has been used so much and used so much in designs that it shouldn't be used for. And so the new has just worn off on that one. And again, it's a great font. I'm not trying to, to put down these font designers. Like they should be, whoever did Papyrus should feel like a rock star because it has been around for so long. It's business logos that you see. It, it was the, the font used for the Avatar movie, which I can't believe that they did that. Um, you know, like these fonts have done great. <laughs> and, and mostly because they were awesome when they first came out. It's just once they get used and abused like this, you just, 
they got to be retired. So this is my little cheat sheet of if you don't know yet, you should use these. Um, and and some of them are great. I, I was actually really sad to put Butterfly on here because that's such a cute handwritten script. But it is such a cute handwritten script that when you scroll through Facebook groups, you see it over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, it just, the new wears off. So anyway, I officially took an hour, unless I cut some of this out, and I don't think I will. Um, so I'm sorry, this is my longest tutorial. I have um, I've really tried to stay away from really long videos, but this is just one of those that I, I just, I wanted to explain some of these thought processes that go through my head when I'm making font choices, um, just in case that could be helpful. And then, you know, touch on some kind of, you know, basic rules of thumb. Um, Cause fonts are hard. They're, they're really, really hard. And, um, you know, any, any, if I, if I could help anyone a little bit, you know, like it, it's worth, it's worth taking the time to do. And, and it's, this isn't an easy topic to cover. Um, I was looking to kind of see if there was other like font stuff on YouTube and there are, but a lot of them are really based at, at graphic design, which is a little bit different than like product, um, you know, t-shirts and stuff design and um and I, I mean no offense on this one but they're all men but it's there's so many like font videos from men and they're talking about you know like kind of manly fonts and cool man products and um I, I felt like we needed to touch on kind of the more the 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 woman woman's touch on, on font opinions um and a majority of the people who are buying these shirts and mugs and pillows are women so um you got you gotta you gotta pick fonts that appeal to women so i i thought i might have a little bit different um uh, point of view than 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 what i'm seeing is available out there for font help so um totally not putting down the men who have made font videos. They're great. I was watching them. Um, I, I've learned something from everyone. It's just, it's a little bit different market. And I thought that we needed to kind of hone in on, on a more specific use of fonts in the t-shirt, mug, pillow, crafter, Etsy market. So anyway, um, I'm sorry this took so long. I'm gonna have all of this information on the website, so if you want to um, download any of these, save them to your computer. Um, I'm gonna try to link to as many of these fonts as I can. I'm also working on some like little cheat sheets of these are some great script fonts and these are some great sans serif fonts or whatever that um, you know might be might give you some ideas on some fun fonts to try. Um, so those will be on debbiedoesdesign.com. Um, I do have the comments turned off on my channel, and that is because I get too many comments to keep up on. And a lot of them end up being kind of spammy. So I just, we have a Facebook group, Debbie Does Design Groupies. It is up to 27,000 members as of May 14th, 2021. Um, and so the group is where I go first for questions. So... Um, I, I just had to kind of organize, organize where things were coming in because it kind of hit a level of crazy a couple of years ago. So, um, if you have questions, join the group. Um, I will see it and, and I, I almost always answer like everybody. And if I don't tag me, cause maybe I haven't seen it. Um, you can also go to the website. We have live chat set up with the amazing Kelly who helps me keep everything organized on the website. So if you have questions there, you can go there too. Um, there's also contact us form and some other variations. So if you have questions or comments or you want to add anything or I just totally miss something, feel free to reach out. I am very active on social media. I just don't have the YouTube comments turned on because it just kind of went crazy. So um, I love you all. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to try to cover some Illustrator stuff next if I don't run out of time here. Um, some more specific text Illustrator stuff. So um, like, follow, subscribe, all that jazz.